Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Senators working well into the night debating the massive COVID-19 relief bill. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, a look at that relief package and the latest on the vaccine front. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, it is 59 degrees right now and it's a lot warmer than it's been, you know, this whole week. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday. It is March 5th. And for some of you this morning, it's a damp start to the day. I live up north of the city and it was absolutely wet on the streets and the cars, everything this morning. But as I got closer it, into towards downtown, everything dried out. Oh, OK. I didn't even know that because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm closer to downtown. So mm -hmm. for me, it was a, a dry drive to work. Yeah. And mine was damp. Coming in, uh, living closer to downtown, uh, the back porch and everything was all damp this morning. So a lot of mist hanging around here, fog, humidity, humidity, yeah, sky high, but that's all going to be changing by about mid morning. We got a front moving on through here and uh, this is what it looks like over there by the airport. Visibility is still pretty good, but uh, it looks like we've got somewhat of a reflection off the road over there on 410 from the uh, headlights. So yeah, just kind of assume that most roads are going to be on the damp side this morning. And of course, it's not enough to uh, really wash any of the dirt and oil off there. So it's going to make it very slippery. Mile and a half visibility right now. Kerrville mile and a quarter in uh, Bernie. Not bad Stinson and Port A, but some is being reported around uh, San Antonio International and Rock Springs is down to pea soup as of right now. So most everybody is seeing some fog. It will be sticking around for the next few hours. And as usually is the case, it is going to get thicker at times. 58 degrees here in town 59 Port SA. So everybody is very consistent this morning and we are about 10 degrees above normal. Just think a couple of days ago, we were 10 degrees below normal. Molds on the moderate side, low amounts of mountain cedar and elm. And uh, throughout the day, we're going to make it up to 72 degrees at noon. And it's going to be warm. We'll be almost 10 degrees above normal. Some folks are going to make it up into the low 80s later on today. Very dry air, very breezy. So the fire danger is going to be uh, getting up there, especially in portions of the hill country. Weekend forecast is coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Samuel King and it's right. I see flashing lights now, too. Yeah, with a lot of uh, crashes and construction uh, for uh, relative to this hour. Uh, we'll start here at the crossroads area. Had this a crash reported here at uh, I-10 eastbound at Loop 410. A short time ago, that seemed to be affecting traffic more than it is now. So that might be an indication that things are improving there. Also had a crash on the board overnight, Loop 1604 at Bitters Road. Uh, same thing here, the traffic flow is improving. So that means that things are might be improving here very quickly. Uh, we, as we mentioned yesterday morning, we have uh, this construction, I-10 westbound between 1604 and uh, Loop 410. You can see a little bit of a slowdown there as people are diverted. So let's take a look at that travel time between uh, 410 and 1604. Right now, that looks good six minutes, and that might be a function of the fact that there's a little traffic on the road. And here is uh, I-10 east at 1604. You can see flashing lights and some diversions. How that'll probably last here for the next couple of hours. So I have another update coming up, guys. San Antonio police searching for a victim after a shooting near a southeast side apartment complex last night. Police were called out to the complex in the 4800 block of Pecan Grove just after 5 p.m. They say the shooting stemmed from an ongoing family situation that has spanned uh, several days. SAPD says what started off as a fist fight between two juveniles near the complex ended with one of them pulling out a handgun and shooting the other. Officer said the person who was shot also returned fire and left the scene. Now they're working to locate him to find out the extent of his injuries. Several other people were taken into custody. Police are working to discover their role in the situation. Well, this morning, that COVID relief bill is on Capitol Hill. The Senate worked well into the night on the massive COVID relief bill. Meanwhile, the country is ramping up its vaccination efforts as states battle with restrictions and mask mandates. ABC's Aika Jaji is in Washington with the latest. 628 pages. The table of contents for this act is as follows. It's the length of President Biden's nearly $2 trillion COVID relief bill, and Republicans want to hear every single word that's written. Of each socially disadvantaged farmer. The move forcing senators to stay inside the Capitol for hours, a stalling tactic from Republicans who say the bill is too expensive. The real tragedy here is not Senate process. It's how ill-suited this bill is to what Americans need right now. 
But according to a recent Monmouth University poll, 62% of Americans are in favor of the $1.9 trillion relief package, compared to 34% of Americans who oppose it. The bill includes unemployment benefits of $400 a week. It also includes $160 billion for COVID testing and vaccinations, help for small businesses, and stimulus payouts of $1,400 for Americans earning up to $75,000 a year. This morning, an average of 2 million vaccines are going into arms every Every day in this country, from coast to coast, mass vaccination sites are popping up. Nine new FEMA vaccination sites opened this week. In California, Governor Gavin Newsom not only ordering 40% of all vaccines to be reserved for the most vulnerable low-income communities, but also calling out other leaders who forego mass mandates and other restrictions. We are encouraging people basically to double down on mask wearing, particularly in light of all of what I would argue is bad information coming from at least four states in this country. Leaders like Texas Governor Greg Abbott, who doubled down on his decision to lift restrictions. Texans have mastered the safe strategies. They don't need an order from Austin, Texas, telling them what to do. Now, Dr. Fauci says studies are being conducted on vaccinated people to find out which activities are safe and which restrictions could be lifted in the near future. In Washington, Ike Ajachi, ABC News. Governor Greg Abbott says he is trusting Texans to keep COVID-19 from spreading by following safety protocols. Meanwhile, here's a look at the latest coronavirus cases in Bear County. The seven day average is now at 329 per 24 hours. That's a decrease decrease from the previous report. Two more deaths were also listed. There continues to be a decline in our local hospitals. 368 COVID-19 patients are being treated this morning. 136 are in the intensive care unit and 72 are on ventilators. Two family detention centers near San Antonio could soon become rapid processing hubs for migrants at the border. The Biden administration announced preparations underway to convert operations similar to Ellis Island in New York. The center is located in Dilly and Carnes County. According to the Department of Homeland Security, the goal is to screen migrant parents and children, then release them into the states within 72 hours. San Antonio's Interfaith Welcome Coalition spoke with Homeland Security about these plans. They were also told once processing is up and running, migrants will be tested for COVID-19. And time now is 437, about 59 degrees right now. So ahead, the latest on President Biden's request to the Supreme Court to dismiss cases involving sanctuary cities. And the San Antonio Spurs trying, yes, trying to keep themselves in the win column last night against the Oklahoma City Thunder. Highlights just ahead. And outside with live cam. Yeah, very, very muggy start in some places, rather moist start to the uh, Friday morning. We're going to check back in with Samuel and Mike coming up. It is Friday and we are excited about the weekend. It's almost here, folks. Hang in there. And welcome back. It's 440. The Biden administration says the U.S. Supreme Court should dismiss three pending cases concerning so-called sanctuary cities. The legal filing is the latest from the new Biden Justice Department, changing positions from those taken by the Trump administration. Sanctuary cities limit cooperation between local law enforcement and federal immigration authorities. Lower courts have divided are divided over a Trump policy that directed the Justice Department to withhold federal grant funds from jurisdictions that limited their cooperation with the feds. Pope Francis headed to Iraq as we speak to urge the country's dwindling number of Christians to stay put and help rebuild the country after years of war and persecution. During his visit to Iraq, Francis will pray in the Baghdad church that was the site of one of the worst massacres of Christians, the 2010 attack by Islamic militants that left 58 people dead. Francis says he wants to refocus the world's attention on the largely neglected people whose northern Christian communities were largely empty during the violent Islamic State reign from 2014 through 2017. A former Maryland police chief facing more than a dozen attempted murder charges after he allegedly targeted a series of enemies in at least 12 arson cases going back a decade. The 12 fires took place from 2011 until late last year. Law enforcement said investigators had been unable to make a connection between the 12 alleged arsons until recently. The break in the case came shortly after the last known fire in 2020 when a link between the victims was discovered that eventually led investigators to the former police chief. Back here at home, some of our first responders got to see the Spurs in action live last night. 
uh, against the Thunder. Fans are allowed back in next Friday. Unfortunately, it wasn't a good night for our Spurs, even though both Oklahoma City and San Antonio are fighting fatigue and injuries. The Thunder found a way to win it. They beat San Antonio 107-102. Despite the Spurs being ahead by 11 at the half, San Antonio put in a good effort, though. DeMar DeRozan had 20 points. Trey Lyles added 15 points and 10 rebounds. DeJounte Murray with 14. The Spurs led in the first. Thunder outscored the Spurs 57-41 in the second half. San Antonio also had 19 turnovers, which led to 26 points for the Thunder. San Antonio was also without LaMarcus Aldridge, Rudy Gay, Derek White, and Devin Vassell. Gay, White, and Vassell, who have not played since February 14th due to the league's COVID-19 health and safety protocols. Up next, Spurs get a break during the MCA All-Star Weekend, but we'll be back in action next Wednesday in Dallas starting at 730. After that, they'll return home for the first in-person games for fans next Friday. 3,200 people will be allowed at that game versus Orlando starting at 8. I'm glad the first responders got to see the game, but too bad they didn't win. This I time. know, yeah, that would have been nice to actually see a win versus the Thunder. Yeah, next time. <laughs> time now, 443 and 59 degrees. Still ahead, we take a look at Amazon Prime's RX and how it may help you save money on prescriptions. And a first look at the story of an ultimate scammer who posed as a German heiress and scammed New York's high society. In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive. Many people see you as the ultimate scammer. Are you? She's been called the Soho grifter. Anna Sorokin, who renamed herself Anna Del V, accused of posing as a German heiress, claiming to have a $60 million bank account overseas, living a high-end life among New York's elite, complete with private flights, boutique hotels, and designer goods. Sorokin was convicted of theft of services, grand larceny, and attempted grand larceny in 2019 and sent to prison. This morning, she is free and speaking out to ABC News. How would you describe the real Anna Delvey? Who is she? Um, oh, that's such a loaded question. <laughs> the ABC News exclusive interview is coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Monica Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. And we assume she talks more in that interview. Uh, most people know you can buy just about anything on Amazon, and now you can add prescription medications to the list. But what about the price? 12 on your size, Marilyn Morris had some details. Pam and Glenn Hubenack take prescription pills daily. I take three. Metformin is for the diabetes, the phenofibrate for triglycerides, and then uh, a sugar pill to reduce, to lower my sugar. I take the um, amlodipine, but I get, it's, I do take it every day, but I can get a six month um, bottle. The Hubenac shop Costco, where they can get 90 or even 180 day refills. But when they found out about Amazon Pharmacy, I would switch easily. Amazon's so easy. I mean, it ships right to the door. Convenient, yes. But how does cost compare? To find out, Pam created an account on Amazon Pharmacy. When you type in your last four digits of your social, the website finds your insurance. Just add your medications and prescriber's info. This is where Pam hit a roadblock. Since she isn't due for refills until next month, Amazon Pharmacy wouldn't tell her how much she'll pay. You can check the price without insurance. Amazon tells customers who want their copay price to call their insurance company. So Pam did, and here's what we learned. With insurance, Amazon Pharmacy's prices were at least double what the Hubenex pay Costco for three of their prescriptions, sometimes more. The Pioglitazone, for example, was more than five times what they pay at Costco. And Amazon Pharmacy doesn't fill more than a 30-day supply. But if you pay the cash price, no insurance, that's where Amazon Pharmacy promises the big savings, up to 80% off generics. But for those savings, you do have to be a Prime member, $120 a year. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. It's such a game to try to find the lowest prices. It's like a, it's like a shell game at times, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, well, some of those prices, I think I'd rather just keep doing what I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. I understand. Yeah, there's, there should be a simpler option, it would seem. 449, let's check traffic. Here is Samuel King. How is it looking early on our Friday? Well, we have still some construction out about in the area. This is an I-10 uh, eastbound heading into uh, downtown. Uh, there's some construction there uh, on the ramp. Uh, we're told that this should be clearing up here 
or picking up in the next uh, 10 minutes or so. So, uh, but there, if you're if you're traveling uh, on I-10 heading into downtown, and here's a look at that on the map. See already the uh, traffic flow is improving. It was down to about 45 miles per hour a little bit at Colorado uh, just a few minutes ago. Uh, but you can see uh, that still that's still on the scene. So uh, don't worry about that uh, in terms of seeing what's going on. Uh, that's crash still on the board at loop 1604 at bidders, but really not impacting the traffic flow too much. But we still have uh, construction, as we mentioned, on the east side as well on I-10. Uh, this is a uh, westbound at FM uh, 1516. You're seeing uh, those delays uh, backing up. So if you're coming in from Seguin at this hour, here's how long it'll take you to get to downtown, 32 minutes. Uh, so with the traffic being fairly light, uh, that's not really impacting things uh, too much, but we'll keep an eye on it. As we saw yesterday, those de delays started to build here as we got to the five and the six o'clock hour. All right. All right. Thank you, Samuel. Uh, world premiere this morning, Mike Osterhage in the San Antonio production of On Golden Pond. <laughs> <laughs> very <laughs> nice, very nice. This, so, <laughs> yeah, and the Golden Pond is, once again, Woodlawn Lake. Mm -hmm. Mr. McClellan, a beautiful, beautiful shot there of the uh, sunset, and the Ducks got their five seconds of fame. Nice landing, he's stuck landing, so beautiful out there. I love all, and we say this every time, all the different views of Woodlawn Lake. I mean, it looks like you're downtown, then it looks like you're out in the middle of the hill country somewhere, depending on what direction you're pointing. All right, we do have some fog out there. Now, visibility just from this picture, looking at the airport looks okay. The road is definitely damp, but officially five miles visibility out there at the airport, and then it really drops off going up I-10 and toward Bernie Stage and toward Kerrville. Castorville has some fog, and then going up 35 in uh, to New Braunfels, Rock Springs, Pea Soup right now, you Valley. Most everybody has some fog, not quite as much Gonzales and LaGrange, but it, it is going to continue to stick around for the next few hours, at least through sunrise and just after that. And then also it may get thicker at times. All right, so dew point temperatures are very high. You definitely feel it when you step outside, run neck and neck with air temperatures. But then look out there in Ozona and Dryden, how the Dew points drop off a good 30, 40 degrees or so, and that drier air is going to be working its way in our direction. So we will still be up through about 10, 10 30 or so in the humidity. Then by just before noon, the front moves on through here. Here comes the drier air dropping in, and that's going to really, really just, I mean, push all the humidity out of here. Most of the clouds are going to be getting on out of here. The downside is now it is going to be breezy today, which is not that bad. However, with this very dry air and the fact that we haven't had rain in basically forever, the fire danger is going to be much higher, especially out to the west. So something to keep in mind today. Dry air is going to be sticking around then in through the next couple of days. So it's going to be a really comfortable weekend. And the other thing with this front that moves through, it's not as though cold air is going to be falling in right behind it. So with the dry air, that's going to heat up quite easily. So today is going to be the warmest day of the week. Then the cooler air is going to come in here uh, overnight into tomorrow as well as into the weekend. You see this this little bit of a shade of gray right there. That's some of the clouds that are hanging around here. And again, they will be hanging around through the rest of the morning as well as some of that fog. 72 degrees then today at noon. The front will have moved through. The wind's going to be shifting around about 15, 20 miles per hour, gusting on top of that. And that's going to be the situation throughout most of the day. 78 degrees, very warm, but very low humidity. And then tonight, things are going to cool off mm, fairly quickly. We'll still be a little bit above normal by tomorrow morning. And then we're going to be starting off at uh, 47 degrees on Sunday, 66. And notice how temperatures really start to go back up then. So we're going to be looking at the 80s and maybe even some uh, mid 80s by the latter part of next week. Looks like a big warm up, maybe another front by next weekend. And wishful thinking, fingers crossed, next weekend as of right now is the only really decent chance of rain. Okay. For over a week now, I've been telling Steph I'm a little nervous. I, we've been, it's been a couple weeks since the big winter storms. Still no new CPS energy bill. Oh. I haven't got mine either. Yeah, so yeah. I know they're trying to work out yeah. the, the billion dollar bill and spread that out or give us a credit for when we didn't have power, but uh. it's still a big old goose egg. I'm a little nervous. A lot of us are nervous. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I was wondering the same thing, too, I, so I'm not and alone. I okay. checked again this morning. It says still not there, so we, we wait. The mystery continues. 454, 60 degrees. And coming up next, we're going to hear from the stars of the newest Disney Pixar film, plus a long-awaited sequel finally being released.
We are hearing from the stars of Disney's newest animated film. Plus, Coming to America is finally being released today. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. After a wave of recent attacks against Asian Americans in the U.S., Kelly Marie Tran hopes her new film might help heal some open wounds. Raya and the Last Dragon is the first Disney film to feature a Southeast Asian lead character. We are hopefully about to share something with the world that gives our community something to feel joy about because mm -hmm. when you're living in a world that makes you feel fear and makes you feel afraid to be who you are, um, to be able to have a moment to feel joy and to celebrate it and be proud of it feels like a rebellion in itself. Riot and the Last Dragon is out today on Disney Plus and in theaters. We are going back to America. Also out today, the star-studded sequel, Coming to America, which reunites Eddie Murphy, Arsenio Hall, and much of the original cast from 1988. That's on Amazon Prime Video. And Robin Wright's directorial debut, Land, is available for streaming rental after spending a few weeks in theaters. Sunday, it's the Critics' Choice Awards as Hollywood award season gets into full swing. David Fincher and Netflix's Citizen Kane drama Mank leads the nominees with 12. Netflix's Ozark and The Crown lead the TV side with six apiece. The Critics' Choice Awards, hosted by Tay Diggs, airs Sunday night on The CW. And happy birthday today to Ava Mendez. The actress is 47. While magician Penn Jillette might make some birthday cake disappear, he's 66. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. And time now is 458 and 60 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, the latest on why President Joe Biden called off a second airstrike against an Iranian-backed militia in Syria. Plus, you can soon take your Amazon Fire TV on the road in your Jeep. <laughs> Details ahead in Tech Bites. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, President Biden makes a last minute decision to call off a second airstrike against Iranian backed militia. Well, each and every morning this week, we've been warming up a bit. It's quite muggy out there this morning. As a matter of fact, you might need to use your windshield wipers just to head out the driveway this morning. In some places, it's a dewy start to the day. Hi, good morning. Happy Friday. It's March 5th, and that's a First thing I noticed when I walked out, I mean, well, at least I didn't have to grab the jacket because it's a lot warmer than it's been all week. Yeah, about 60 mm -hmm. degrees. And with it being so muggy and a lot of low clouds out there, Mike, I'm thinking we might have the possibility of some fog. Oh, we already have yeah, plenty yeah. of fog around the area and plenty of mist, too. I don't know if you all saw uh, damp roads, but uh, just coming on in, you know, the going walking out to the car. Everything was uh, fairly damp this morning and it's going to stay that way throughout the rest of the morning. So we're still holding at uh, 58 dew point 57 when those two numbers are running neck and neck as they are and you don't have much of a breeze out there. That's when you start to see a lot of a fog around the area and that's what we are seeing as of right now. Then everything is going to be changing about now here in town, 10, 11 o'clock, a little bit earlier, obviously in the hill country, there's a front moving on through. That's going to get rid of the humidity. Wind's going to shift around, but it's not cold air right away. So the dryer is going to heat up very quickly. We're going to make it up into the upper 70s later on this afternoon. It's going to be a big, big warm up and the fire danger is going to be pretty high out in the hill country. So with that very dry air, windy conditions and the fact we haven't had rain in forever. The aquifer yesterday's reading dropped down two tenths of a foot and the allergens mold is moderate, low amounts of everything else. Speaking of fog, check out some of the visibilities right now out there. At Kerrville, mile and a quarter mile, Bernie stage. The airport's actually improved compared to just uh, last hour. New Braunfels, however, has dropped down to three miles and then Rock Springs has the uh, very thick pea soup fog out there. So this is going to be going back and forth as it always does probably get thicker before it's all said and done. So cloudy fog mist. Yeah, like uh, Stephanie said, you don't need a jacket this morning and then later on this afternoon, mostly sunny, very warm 78 for a high temperature. Then the cooler air comes on in here. We'll have partly cloudy skies over the weekend. Kind of a 50 50 mix of sun and clouds, best way to put it, and cooler temperatures. So instead of almost 10 degrees above normal, we're going to be about five below normal, right around mid 60s over the weekend. That won't last very long because, boy, the thermometer is going to get turned up going into next week. Plenty of clouds, no great rain chances, and we're going to be pushing at 80 by the uh, middle part of the week, middle and lat latter part of next week. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King. What's going on, sir? Well, we still have this construction, Mike. 
here, uh, I-10 uh, westbound uh, here on the east side between 410 and 1604. This is a view from 1604, and you can see traffic uh, starting to build there as it did uh, yesterday morning. Uh, we're told that this is part of some of the ongoing work on uh, I-10, uh, but uh, the main lane closures are something that has been a new wrinkle uh, this week. And so let's take a look at that delay here. Now you see down to 29 miles per hour, and it's actually a sort of building a little bit there at FM 1516. So watch out for that. And so uh, the traffic time on the east side of I-10, uh, eight minutes now between 1604 and 410, five minutes going the other way. Mike was talking about some fog to the west of San Antonio and here it's showing up uh, on our road weather tool. So if you're driving from Bernie, Comfort, uh, Pipe Creek, areas like that, uh, watch out for fog as you're heading out this morning and make sure you plan some extra time when you're traveling. And here's a look at the travel time, not really affecting that travel time from I-10 just yet. Uh, 24 minutes on I-10 into downtown San Antonio, 17 minutes on 35 from Lytle, 33 minutes on I-10 from Seguin. Remember that construction there uh, for at least the next hour or so. And we'll have another update coming up. Now to the U.S. and Iran, ABC News has now confirmed President Joe Biden called off a second airstrike against Iranian-backed militia in Syria after learning women and children had been in the area. There is also more details about the rocket attack this week on U.S. forces in Iraq. As ABC's Ian Pinnell reports, this is happening as the Pope is scheduled to visit Iraq today. ABC News confirming President Biden called off a second airstrike against an Iranian-backed militia last week. Sources say it happened just an hour before F-15Es were ready to bomb separate targets. Aerial reconnaissance spotted women and children at the second site and so couldn't rule out civilian casualties. When that information got to the president, he called off the mission. The other airstrike in Syria did kill at least one Iranian-backed militia fighter. Shortly after, the administration sent a confidential message to Tehran. Part of a combined diplomatic and military strategy to communicate the message, America wasn't trying to escalate the situation. All this as we're learning more about those 10 rockets fired from a truck at a base housing U.S. soldiers in western Iraq. At least three of the rockets were shot out of the sky using a defense system, which fires thousands of rounds at an incoming target. And in the middle of these rising tensions, Iraq's awaiting the first visit of Pope Francis. It's an unprecedented trip to a country ravaged by years of fighting and the plague of ISIS. It's hard to overestimate the level of bomb damage to Al Tahira Church here in Mosul. ISIS used this as one of their bases. They said, we're going to go to Rome. We will occupy Rome. Well, imagine the irony that instead, Rome, Pope Francis, is coming to Al Tahira Church in Mosul. The Pope will be protected by heavily armed security forces during his three-day visit, even as he hopes to deliver a message of peace and healing. Ian Panel, ABC News, Abil, Iraq. And now to an update on the vaccine rollout. WellMed mass vaccination sites are set to reopen registration this morning. There will be appointments available for 9,000 doses of the Moderna vaccine. The phone lines will open starting at 8 a.m. The number to call is on your screen, 833-968-1745. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says a special committee appointed to look into the response to the winter weather crisis last month will meet later this morning, and you can be a part of it. It starts at 10 a.m. at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center. This will be, uh, this is rather, a panel appointed to examine what happened with CPS Energy and SAWS during last month's weather emergency. The meeting will be broadcast on TVSA, which is AT&T Channel 99, Grande Channel 20, Spectrum Channel 21, and Digital Antenna Channel 16.1. You can also dial in for audio by calling 210-207-5555. The mayor says if you decide to attend in person, keep in mind that health and safety protocols for COVID will be in effect. And time now is 5.08 and about 59 degrees right now. Still ahead, new details on a partnership between Samsung and MasterCard to develop a biometric credit card. Also next, a special look inside the major renovations going on at the San Antonio Humane Society. Have plans this weekend outdoors? What will the weather be like? We'll check in with meteorologist Mike Osterhage coming up. 512 on your Friday. Welcome back. For the first time, we're checking out the San Antonio Humane Society's newest expansion project. Our Sarah Costa gives us a tour. 
As these adorable puppies and animals await their forever homes, they are all smiles at the San Antonio Humane Society after a much needed expansion is complete. You're able to see the donations in action. We are getting a first look at the San Antonio Humane Society's $10 million expansion project, which includes its new Lou Naylor Medical Building that opened in the middle of the pandemic in October. The medical facility has a much larger operation space where veterinarians can spay and neuter 80 to 100 animals a day, which means more than 20,000 pets a year. The facility also has a separate room for orthopedic surgeries. The much larger medical facility has many more holding stations, examining rooms, and a rehabilitation room that includes a therapy pool. Kim Hinsey, the Director of Development and Public Relations at the San Antonio Humane Society, says the expansion project will help the nonprofit reach so many more animals. I mean, there's anywhere, there's like 150,000 pets in San Antonio um, that need services, that are homeless. So we're able to take in some of those pets, we're able to have them spayed and neutered, um, and, you know, help them get out to be adopted. The medical facility isn't just for animals at the Humane Society, but also open to San Antonio Antonio pet owners in search of low cost spay and neuter and wellness services. We'll be able to take in more animals. We'll be able to adopt more animals. I mean, it's just it's huge. The capital campaign project also included other renovations on its Fredericksburg Road campus like renovations to the puppy palace and kitty cottage. Part of the expansion includes these two new much bigger dog runs where rescues like Amber and Biscuit have plenty of room to play and run around. Hinsey says it's taken many years to raise the money needed to complete the project, and it's a great feeling to finally see the donations come to fruition. We're very thankful um, to those that have, have helped and those that have answered. Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Aww. Cute. Great job out there, buddy. San Antonio Humane Society. 514, about 60 degrees. And still ahead, a popular social media service is adding voice and video calling to its desktop app. And the first vehicles with Amazon streaming service on board will soon be rolled out. Are you ready to join the doers? Those who do more with less asthma, thanks to Dupixent, the add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma. Dupixent isn't for sudden breathing problems. It can improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks and help prevent severe asthma attacks. It's not a steroid, but can help reduce or eliminate oral steroids. Dupixent can cause serious allergic reactions, including anaphylaxis. Get help right away if you have rash, shortness of breath, chest pain, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection. And don't change or stop your asthma treatments, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Do more with less asthma. Talk to your asthma specialist about Dupixent. If your financial situation has changed, we may be able to help. Samsung and MasterCard are teaming up on a fingerprint credit card that will add an extra layer of security. ABC's Mono Kosar Abdi has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, a high-tech credit card. Samsung and MasterCard are joining forces to create a biometric credit card that will include a built-in fingerprint scanner and several baked-in chips. The idea is to increase security and decrease physical contact points. WhatsApp is adding voice and video calling to its desktop app. The features were only available on the phone app, but the change puts WhatsApp in a better position to compete with Zoom and Google Meet. Plans are also in the works to eventually offer group calls instead of just one-on-one. -on -one. Finally, Amazon's Fire TV is hitting the road. Jeep says the streaming service will be built into its newest Wagoneer SUVs. Fire TV will be accessible from both the main display and rear seat displays. The driver will be prevented from watching Prime video content while driving. Hopefully they won't hear any spoilers either. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Friday morning time check, 18 minutes past the hour. And earlier this morning, I saw a lot of construction on I-10, but I just looked at the screen. Samuel, did it clear up? Well, this uh, construction here, this is I-10 at Frio, and they have uh, picked up uh, for the time being, so it is a uh 
a smooth sailing there on I-10 uh, eastbound heading into downtown. But we still have the situation out east uh, between 1604 and 410. You see traffic uh, being diverted uh, there to the frontage road. So we expect that to last another uh, hour or so uh, like we had yesterday. And you can see the delays there starting to build 27 uh, miles per hour. So coming in from uh, Seguin, there's also some construction further to uh, the east on I-10 this morning. Uh, so that time is about 32 minutes. So that's a fairly good time, a little above normal. And for coming in on 35 from New Braunfels is 26 minutes. And as Mike has uh, been talking about some fog out, especially out to the west of San Antonio. So if you're coming in on I-10 from Comfort or Bernie, and that's even creeping into uh, northwest Bayer County now, uh, watch out for that and, and take your time this morning, guys. All right. Well, last half hour, uh, Mike's backdrop was a Case Hat Connect picture. It looked like it put him in the movie on Golden Pond. This yes. one, <laughs> perhaps no country for old men. Oh, that's a good <laughs> background. Although I, I read the caption, Mike. It's I know. The caption is what looks like the Alamo. Mm -hmm. It kind of does. does. Or it the looks arch. like a, or a yeah. UFO. Or a very large UFO, but yeah. yeah. But no, very cool picture. Thank you very much for the AKSAC Connect pictures. We appreciate that. All right, now as far as fog, um, that picture doesn't look bad at all. You can see a little bit of fuzz off there in the distance. Visibility at the airport had gone up from about an hour or so ago. It was down to uh, five miles. Now it's up to nine. New Braunfels went up uh, just a mile in the past couple of minutes. Bernie stage still a lot of fog as uh, Sam was talking about going out in toward Kerrville further out to the west. Rock Springs has actually improved slightly, but still that's very thick and it's going to continue to go back and forth. It'll thicken up at times and most everybody with just a couple of exception, exceptions, most everybody is seeing some fog around here this morning. So this will be sticking around for the next couple of hours. And on top of that, there's a lot of mist. All the roads when I was coming into work this morning were damp. Um, it looked like there's a little bit of a sheen in some of the uh, trans guide cameras, some of the uh, the live cams as well. So just kind of watch that. All right, yesterday we were up to 75 degrees. That was about four or five degrees warmer here in town compared to the previous day. Got up into the uh, low to mid 80s down to the southwest. And then later on, Today continue to add to that. So we'll be up another three, four degrees or so upper 70s and low 80s around the area. And again, we'll be seeing some mid 80s down there along the Rio Grande Valley down to the uh, west and to the southwest. Dew points have gone up. Remember yesterday they had gone up from the previous day, especially in the hill country. And we've gone up about 15, 20 degrees for dew point temperatures. And you know it when you step outside because it is definitely humid out there. And that will be the case for the next couple of hours of course, helping out with that fog. But then there's that drier air out there to the west, which will continue to work in here. So by, uh, according to this computer model, by about 11 o'clock, just before lunchtime, obviously it's going to be sooner in the hill country, but that front's going to move on through here and it will sweep down and get rid of all this humidity. Wind is going to be out of the northwest, about 15, 20 miles per hour, gusting throughout the day. And with this very dry air on top of the fact that we haven't had rain in forever. Uh, the fire danger is going to be high, especially out to the west later on today. The humidity is going to remain on the low side. The temperatures also don't get fooled by the fact that a front's moving on through here because it's not going to be one of those initial drop in temperatures. It is actually going to be warmer today than what we've seen just because of that dry air is going to warm up quite quickly. But then we'll get some relatively cooler air coming in here for the weekend. 72 degrees today at noon, so already about at the normal high temperature. The front will have moved through. Wind's going to shift around, clear out the clouds, get rid of the humidity. We get up to 78 later on this afternoon, a breezy 78 degrees, and then tomorrow down to 52, so still slightly above normal. And we stay at 65 uh, tomorrow, a little breezy as well, mid 60s on Sunday and uh, cooler Sunday morning, almost uh, well, basically normal low temperature Sunday morning, Monday morning. Then it's going to heat up again next week. Wow, 80. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to it, though. And not a drop of rain on oh, that seven okay. day That's forecast. That's not good. Yeah. No. Thank you, Mike. 523, about 59 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, the latest on two movies that are still waiting to debut in theaters. But we will not make you wait for your lottery numbers. Pick three, six, two, two, Fireball four, although your daily four will be streaming on Hulu this afternoon. <laughs> seven, <laughs> four, three, two, Fireball seven. Cash five, we have six, 14, 17, 26, 28. And your Texas two step, three, 11, 19, 30, and bonus ball 17. Even though many films have moved to streaming services, there are some films that have been waiting to open in theaters for a long time. CNN's David Daniel has an update on two delayed big screen features, plus a critic's favorite that is in theaters in today's Hollywood Minute.
Maybe this is the end, but we're gonna go out together. You know I'd ride to the death with you. Fast and Furious fans will have to wait a bit longer for that ride. F9, which Universal had already bumped from last May to this April to this May, is now set to open in theaters June 25th. Universal also bumped Minions, The Rise of Gru a second time. Originally slated for last summer, it's now due out next summer, July 1st, 2022. Some films are opening in theaters, of course, including The Truffle Hunters, a documentary about Italian men in their 70s and 80s who search for elusive truffles with their cherished dogs, dealing with climate change and deforestation as they use hunting secrets passed down through generations. The Truffle Hunters is shortlisted for an Oscar nomination. It opens in New York and L.A. this weekend and in more theaters throughout March. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Looks beautifully shot. Yes, and interesting Very <laughs> as well. Very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, what was the boot over the fire thing? I don't know, but then I got nervous with the bathtub scene when he had a blow dryer. I was like, ah! In the bathtub. He, well, over. He was uh, with the dog there. Right. So, But yeah, but that's not. Yeah, some, some red flags for us there. No, no. 527, about 59 degrees. And still ahead, the latest on lawmakers in the Senate who are now engaged in a marathon effort to take up President Joe Biden his $1.9 trillion pandemic relief bill. More details on a former police chief accused of uh, setting at least 12 fires intentionally. And are you ready to try a new makeup line from Chipotle? We're going to tell you about this unique product inspired by its popular taco ingredients. Makeup from Chipotle? Mm. Hi, good morning. Happy Friday. It is March 5th, and for a lot of people, spring break starts today. That's right, it does. And uh, Mike Osterhage is here with a spring break forecast. Yes, indeed. And uh, spring break next week is going to be, well, starting off over the weekend, cool-ish, but Boy, it's really going to warm up by late next week. First of all, uh, not bad as far as visibility from this vantage point. Live cam over here by the airport. The road, notice how there's a bit of a sheen. It, there's a lot of mist. Uh, most of the roads when I was coming into work this morning were damp. So just kind of assume that because we got a lot of fog around here. And look at those two numbers. Dew points and temperature are almost the same. So humidity, obviously relative humidity is extremely high and that combined with hardly any wind out there is why we do have a lot of fog. Two miles visibility at Kerrville nine here in town for New Braunfels and just a mile and a quarter at Bernie stage. Rock Springs is still reporting at a quarter mile and notice how most everybody does have a little bit of fog around here and it's going to be sticking around throughout the rest of the morning commute, as well as some of these damp roads. Temperatures, even uh, out in parts of the hill country, well out to the west, everybody is very consistent. We're about 10 degrees above normal in town, hovering at 58 degrees, which is the temperature of Uvalde, as well as Hondo. And then you folks out to the west, especially are going to be seeing readings getting up into the 80s later on today. Mold is moderate. Mountain Cedar and Elm are on the low side. So we'll have our mist and fog around here this morning. Temperatures are going to be staying basically steady. Front's going to move through uh, sometime between 10, 11 o'clock here in town. Obviously sooner in the hill country. Dry air comes on in here. It's going to be windy today. Not initially cool, though, because the dry air is going to really heat up. So we'll make it up to 78 today. Winds out of the northwest at 15 to 20 miles per hour. Then the relatively cooler air moves on here for the weekend. Details on that in just a couple of minutes and a closer look at next week's spring break. Traffic Authority Samuel King hadn't been a lot going on so far, right? No, just uh, really this uh, construction going on in I-10 uh, East on, on the east side between 14 and 1604 uh, in the west uh, bound lanes. You still see uh, some of the traffic uh, being diverted there. Uh, if, if yesterday is any indication, they should be wrapping this up within uh, the next hour or so uh, maybe a little bit longer, uh, but still, if you're in that area, just plan that you might have to end up on, on the frontage roads for part of your trip here on I-10. Again, this slowdown is right at FM uh, 1516 there, so traffic down to 31 miles per hour as uh, traffic gets uh, diverted there. So your trip between 1604 and I-10, uh, it'll slow you down just a little bit right now, seven minutes, uh, but that, that could build uh, as traffic uh, continues uh, to grow. Mike mentioned the fog out to the west, so again, if you're on I-10, 
especially from Comfort and Bernie. And if you're out in Bandera, for instance, uh, just watch out for that. Uh, drive slowly. Uh, the low beams are better in the fog, of course. But your travel time still looking good from Bernie. 24 minutes on I-10, uh, 19 minutes on 20 from uh, uh, 19 minutes on 90 from Castroville, and then 29 minutes from the Pleasanton area on 37. And we'll have another update coming up. Late breaking news now. Sheriff's deputies are investigating a shooting at an apartment complex in far northwest Bear County. Our Katrina Weber is live there with the latest. Good morning, Katrina. Well, good morning. Uh, what we've been able to find out from a deputy here is that this is a fatal shooting. A man about 20 years old who was shot in the face. It appears to have happened on the third floor of this building behind me. That's where we can see crime tape. Uh, and deputies have been walking up and down the steps. Uh, they've been working here since about 2 o'clock this morning. That's when they got the call about the shooting. Now, as I mentioned, we got that information from a deputy earlier. However, we have homicide investigators here now, and they have shut down the information pipe. They're not telling us anything. Uh, they actually put up this crime scene tape after we arrived to keep us back, even though they're working on the third floor of that building. Uh, they are referring us to the public information officer who doesn't, come on to work until much later this morning. So right now, not a lot of information coming out and we're being kept back from the scene uh, here as they investigate what appears to be, or what we've been told is a fatal shooting. Again, a 20 year old man, 20 years old or so, who was shot dead inside these apartments at the Roostico at Fair Oaks Park, at, at the Fair Oaks Apartments. Reporting live on in far Northwest Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. The story still developing. Thank you, Katrina. Well, while most of you were sleeping, the 628 page COVID relief bill was being read aloud. It went well into this morning. And there's still more work to be done. As CNN's Brett Conway reports, Democratic leaders promise they will pass this bill before next week with or without Republican support. And the people of this country have suffered far too much for too long. We need to relieve that suffering. The American Rescue Plan does just that. That plan is in the hands of the Senate now, and the division is painfully clear. Starting at 3.20 Thursday afternoon, all 628 pages of the $1.9 trillion bill were read aloud. And yes, that means everything. The table of contents for this act is as follows. The reading took more than 10 and a half hours until just after 2 o'clock Friday morning. A delay tactic by Republican Senator Ron Johnson of Wisconsin. Hours later, they're back for the voterama when they'll vote on amendments to the bill. And Johnson said he might move to stretch out that process, too. Republicans say the bill calls for too much spending and too little bipartisanship along the way. The only thing bipartisan about their bill was the opposition to it. At the end of the day, there was a lot of spending that really can't be accounted for. That the $1.9 trillion plan has good objectives, but it's massively misdirected. But Democrats say now is the time to be bold. Put the money into the economy to make sure that we can recover quickly. You've got to get the funding out there and you've got to make sure our economy is strong. And the majority leader says he expects the Senate to finish the bill this week. Help is on the way. I'm Britt Conway reporting. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo intends to remain in office in the face of sexual harassment allegations that have weakened his support and led to calls for his resignation. Three women have accused him of inappropriate touching and offensive remarks. In a public statement late yesterday, Cuomo apologized and said that he, quote, learned an important lesson, end quote, about his behavior around women. Women. Cuomo said he will fully cooperate with an investigation into the allegations being overseen by the state's independently elected attorney general. When asked about calls for him to step aside, Cuomo said, quote, I wasn't elected by politicians. I was elected by the people of the state of New York. I'm not going to resign, end quote. U.S. stocks will try to recover today as we head into the weekend after taking a nosedive in all three major Wall Street indices yesterday. Red ink flowing heavily amid inflation fears. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell predicted strong job growth and consumer price increases as the vaccine rollout allows the economy to reopen fully. However, Powell did caution the Fed doesn't believe the economy is at risk of overheating. The Dow lost 345 points. NASDAQ dropped nearly 300. The S&P was off by 51 points.
YouTube is keeping former President Donald Trump's account under suspension for now. The platform's CEO says Trump's account will be restored when the company is confident the risk of violence has gone down. YouTube plans to make that assessment by looking at government statements, police violence readiness levels, and content it sees on its own platform. Trump's account was temporarily suspended on January 13th for violating YouTube's policies against incitement of violence. At the time, YouTube said the restrictions would last for at least a week, but they have remained in place ever since. 539, about 59 degrees. And still ahead, more details on a former police chief who is facing more than a dozen attempted murder charges after being accused in at least 12 arson cases. And we're going to tell you about a new exclusive line of makeup products from Chipotle. Very interesting. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're at about 59 degrees right now, much warmer than it's been all week. A little humid out there, too. We are going to check in with Mike later on. Now to a former police chief accused of setting about a dozen fires in the state of Maryland. Investigators say he targeted his enemies, including his stepson. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the story. This morning, investigators say the alleged serial arsonist seen in this video, allegedly dousing homes in gas and setting them on fire, is a former Maryland police chief who has been using arson as a form of revenge for nearly a decade. I was very shocked, you know, somebody who is a former chief here, to have somebody going out doing that, setting fires, uh, is just unacceptable. Authorities say 69-year-old David Crawford is the hooded figure seen here, running from the scene of one of at least a dozen fires. Investigators say they began hunting for a suspect since the first fire was set in 2011. But it wasn't until 2019 that evidence, including these security videos, linked the same person to fires across five counties. Since then, officials have been narrowing in on the ousted officer. Investigators finally arresting Crawford after finding a target list that included addresses for homes that were burned. While there were no reported injuries to either residents or fire department personnel as the result of these fires, the outcome could have been very different. Among his alleged victims, fellow officers, and the man who replaced him after he was fired from his job as a police chief. To go outside to find my house engulfed and have to come in and wake my family and get them out of the house, it, it's just, it, it knocked me to my knees. Crawford also allegedly used arson to harass his stepson, who moved multiple times. But each time he got into a new place, police say Crawford burned that home too. Crawford is now charged with multiple counts of arson and attempted murder. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. And time now is 543 and about 59 degrees right now. If you've been looking for something along the line of an avocado eye shadow, Chipotle's got you covered. Details coming up. With Americans spending more time at home during the pandemic, a new report released shows more people are getting hurt by some products found around the house. That includes everything from fireworks to skateboards. CNN's Mandy Gaither has tips to keep you and your family safe. For many, the pandemic has provided more time at home, but that comes with a downside. The home has now been turned into a gym, an office, a playground, and a school. A new report by the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission showed that while overall ER visits went down from March through September 2020, reported injuries from certain items and activities around the home went up. Numbers of those hurt from fireworks and flares were up 56 percent for skateboards, scooters and hoverboards and severe injuries for ATVs, mopeds and mini bikes. ER treated injuries went up 39 percent. Bicycle injuries increased for people 40 and older. Emergency hospital visits related to button-sized batteries rose 93% among children ages 5 to 9, and ER treatment rose sharply for injuries related to cleaning supplies. It's that combination of factors, distraction, all these multitasking that's being done, and everyone in the house that sets up a greater exposure for risk in the house. The CPSC says to keep cleaning products in their original bottles and lock them up and away from small children. Gear up with a helmet before riding a scooter, skateboard, or bike. And make sure this label is on a bike helmet, which means it's certified by the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission. Also, never allow young children to play with or ignite fireworks. Even sparklers, which many people think is okay, it's not a good idea to give to children. They burn at a temperature of 2,000 degrees like a blowtorch, and you wouldn't give your child a blowtorch to play with. 
Finally, keep products with small batteries that can be swallowed away from children. They're dangerous and potentially deadly if ingested. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. In your morning consumer headlines, tacos and makeup. An unlikely combo, but it's one that's happening. Thanks to Chipotle and e.l.f. Cosmetics, the products are vegan and cruelty-free and inspired by Chipotle ingredients like rice and guacamole. The eyeshadow palette even includes a coupon for free chips and salsa from Chipotle. With the Makeup Lime Cuns, a new limited menu item available at the Mexican chain restaurant, the vegan eyes chips base bowl will be available starting on March 10th. Wait, that's what it's called? The, uh, the that's, the eyes, chips, mm -hmm. face, bowl? Is that correct, Hardy? I mm. mean, that's what it says there. Wow. That's, that is very interesting. Wow. Nothing subtle about that. I mean, <laughs> they, went, they went there, didn't they, they? They did. But hey, you get a coupon for uh, free chips and salsa. Well, there you go. Win-win situation. 549. <laughs> Let's go ahead and check in with Samuel. <laughs> uh, I, I didn't think you would. I might try it out, though. We'll see. Your microphone is on, is now, it on now, and it's about to start any second. Right. Yes. There, there, you go. there you Yay. go. Yay. When I step out of studio sometimes, I turn it off and forget to turn it back on. So, but here we are. Uh, looking at if you are heading to a Chipotle or some other place during spring break, you will pay more at the gas pump. Uh, so that coupon would come in handy or any other kind of coupon. Uh, 239 now in Bear County, still lower than state average of 248, 275 nationwide. As we mentioned yesterday, uh, the, the combination of uh, the storm closing down some production and just more demand, more people are going to be hitting the roads over the weekend. Uh, so you're, and you're going to see more higher gas prices. A good thing here, though, 16, I 10 east at 1604. Uh, that looks like the, the, the lanes are open westbound, so traffic is flowing slowly, but it is moving now. It's not being diverted off there at the 1516 exit. So here's a look at that. Uh, on uh, the, the map there, you can see just a, even a little bit ago, it was down to maybe 30, 30, 40 miles per hour, but it is flowing slowly again. So they have sort of picked up what they were doing a little bit earlier than they did yesterday morning. So that's a good thing. Uh, out to the north and west, as Mike has been talking about, there is some fog. So watch out uh, for that, especially around Birdie and Bandera uh, this morning. And finally on Bandera Road inside Bear County, uh, looks good. Nine minutes each direction. Some of us caught a glimpse of a really pretty sunset last night. Is this a sunrise or a sunset, Mike? This is a, well, it's this evening, so I'm assuming it's a sunset. Yeah, look beautiful. God, like last night. Yeah, mm -hmm. it does. God paints a beauty. Yeah, it was absolutely gorgeous. It's going to be a beautiful one again tonight. This morning, as far as sunrise, not the situation because we've got a lot of clouds out there. Some fog, and again, we're kind of keeping tabs or, you know, just watching this picture evolve throughout the morning. It's still not bad from this vantage point. Nine miles visibility officially out there at the airport. It has improved slightly at Bernie stage and New Braunfels four miles right now. Stinson and Port SA aren't reporting anything. Then you go out further to Rock Springs. Now that's actually gotten a little bit better at one mile visibility, but most everybody's been saying all morning long has some sort of fog out there. It will stick around for the next couple of hours. And of course, with that, and all this humidity out there, we've got a little bit of mist. Um, not even enough really to use the wipers this morning, but it was just damp enough on the uh, on the pavement. So watch that. 60 in Holotus. Otherwise, uh, everybody's in the mid upper 50, 60 also in Castroville. We're about 10 above normal right now. The humidity, of course, is sky high, but this drier air will continue to move on in here. And so by roughly 11 o'clock this morning, according to this computer model, is when that front's going to move on through. Obviously, a little sooner out there in the hill country. The wind's going to shift around. It's going to obviously get rid of uh, all the fog, any mist, anything like that, the clouds, and bring in much, much drier air. Not initially cooler air. With the dry air in place, uh, we're going to really warm up throughout the day. We'll make it up into the upper 70s, low 80s around the area, even some mid 80s heading over toward the Rio Grande Valley. But also the fire danger, especially out to the west, is going to be higher today with the windy conditions and also that very, very dry air. And the dry air is going to stay in place over the weekend. Then eventually, Overnight and, and tomorrow and Sunday, the relatively cooler air comes in here. So high temperatures will actually be about mm, five or so below normal, as opposed to today being close to 10 above normal. Uh, 72 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies. The front will have moved through windy conditions, of course, much drier air, a comfortable 78 degrees, but still almost 10 above normal. Plenty of sunshine out there. Breezy again tomorrow, 65, so well, roughly 10, 15 degrees cooler tomorrow. Same thing on Sunday. Low temperatures by Sunday and Monday morning will be closer to normal. 
Then it heats up for the end of spring break. It's going to be hot by the end of next week. Really? Like a true San Antonio spring break. And look at the low temperatures staying at 60. That means you got more some more some some more humidity or more some humidity. Uh, however you want to put it coming in here. See, I'm getting it flustered. flustered <laughs> You're getting frustrated too. Flustered, mm -hmm. frustrated by the mm. uh, warm, humid conditions. It's OK. This weekend will be nice, right? This weekend. Yes. OK, there you go. Nothing to get okay. flustered about. So. Or frustrated. Yes. High 54, 59 degrees. <laughs> Let's take a look at your winning lotto numbers. We have 622, Fireball 4, Daily 4, 7432, Fireball 7. Cash 5 numbers 614, 17, 26, 28, Texas 2 Step 311, 1930, with a bonus ball of 17. San Antonio Food Bank serving up relief for thousands of people in South Texas who have been impacted by the historic winter weather last month. With wintry conditions behind, many are looking to restock fridges and water supplies. Food Bank's network of food pantries and mobile food distributions remains fully operational and open to the public. For more information to sign up or help in the next citywide distribution event, just head over to ksatcommunity.com. Glad you're with us on this Friday morning. Still to come, the pandemic has had a big impact on college enrollment. Still ahead in our next hour GMSA, we're going to take a closer look at why community colleges are being hit the hardest. And trans guys, we take a look at traffic right now. There's I-10 upper and lower level near Culebra, 410 at Morrison. We are going to get an update on your weekend forecast and an update on traffic with Samuel King. This northwest side apartment complex is a homicide scene. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Bear County Sheriff's investigators looking into a shooting death overnight. I'll tell you more about it. You can register for a COVID-19 vaccine through WellMed later this morning. Grab a pen and paper because we'll have the number to call in just a few minutes. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we are at 59 degrees, a little bit warmer, a little bit more humid than it's been all week and a start for many people's spring break weekend. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, everybody. We made it to Friday. It's March 5th. Happy Friday. Thank you so much for joining us. And some people are, you know, celebrating a little bit more because their spring break either starts today or this weekend. That's right. So we're talking spring break weather for some folks. Mike, it's so muggy out there this morning. I actually thought it had rained overnight. <laughs> well, there is a lot of mist out there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if y'all saw any coming into work. I did uh, not enough really to even use wipers. It was just that very fine mist, but enough to make the roads kind of damp. So watch that as you uh, hit the roads for your Friday morning commute. And well, there's a uh, wonder where that plane's heading off to taking off for spring break. It looks like uh, it looks like 410. There may be a little bit of a sheen on the highway. So watch that even the uh, the car down there cars on the access road right there. It looks like on uh, Broadway may be a little bit uh, damp. Nine miles visibility officially out there at the airport, although Kerrville has now dropped down to just three quarters of a mile for New Braunfels and Rock Springs. So very perfect example of how things change so quickly. It was at zero visibility about an hour ago and up to a quarter mile. Now no fog is being reported out there, but Catula has really dropped down. So it's going to be going back and forth all morning long throughout the rest of the morning commute. Uh, mold is moderate and Mountain Cedar and Elm are both on the low side. Temperatures, what you have right now is pretty much what it's going to be for the next couple of hours. Wind will shift around about um, between 10 11 o'clock, depending on uh, Hill Country, obviously, first of all, here in town, sometime around 10 30 11 o'clock. That's when the front moves on through here. Drier air, not necessarily colder air immediately behind it. So with that drier air really going to warm up, making it into the upper 70s and even some uh, low to mid 80s over toward the Rio Grande Valley. But also with the dry air and the windy conditions, that's going to increase the fire danger out to the west. Now, the cooler air will come in here for the weekend. So great start to uh, spring break. What's the rest of the week have in store? Stick around for that. Traffic Authority, Samuel King, and well, just looking at that picture, not much fog, and it looks like things move along good. Yeah, just a little mist, depending on which camber view we have and some uh, low clouds, but things are flowing uh, relatively well. Even that construction that was happening overnight on I-10 on the east side uh, has been picking up. Here it is there, uh, the view from uh, 1604. Traffic moving slowly there, but again, uh, no construction in, in the main lanes at this point. Uh, taking a look at the overall picture, you see a lot of green on the map, uh, some delays here on 87, and the fog is starting to shrink a little bit. It was 
was all the way down here into Bear County, but now it's uh, shrinking back a little bit. So we'll see if that trend continues. But if there is fog in your area, of course, uh, allow plenty of distance, slow down and use the low beams. Uh, looking at uh, 151 uh, this morning, had an accident here yesterday, uh, just a little after this time yesterday uh, morning, but looking good right now, eight to nine minutes each way between 1604 and 90. Speaking of 90, 19 minutes coming in uh, from Castroville into downtown San Antonio. 16 minutes on 35 from Lytle, 29 minutes from the Pleasanton area. Some fog reported up in New Braunfels, but that travel time still looks good. 26 minutes and half an hour coming in on I-10 from Seguin. And we'll have another update coming up. Yellow tape and patrol cars. Some of the sites people waking up to an apartment complex in far northwest Bear County this morning. The apartments near I-10 and Fair Oaks Parkway are the scene of a homicide investigation. Our Katrina Weber is out there with a live report. You mentioned earlier that investigators weren't offering a lot of information. Have we been able to find out anything else, Katrina? Well, good morning, Mark. That is correct. They're, they're not uh, really giving us any information here at the scene other than the few details that we got earlier this morning. But I can tell you this investigation still is going on. Uh, some of the detectives who were here earlier have left, but we still have patrol cars, as you can see. Now, detectives have been focusing on this building. Apparently on the third floor is where the shooting happened around 2 o'clock this morning. They told us a man who appears to be about 20 years old was shot in the face, shot and killed. We have seen uh, investigators going around throughout this building, uh, knocking on doors. In fact, I talked to one person who says that they had asked him for any surveillance video that he might have uh, from his apartment. Uh, now, one thing that is unusual is in the last few minutes, I saw a deputy chief arrive. So she's one of the upper brass with the Bear County Sheriff's Office. And it's kind of unusual to see someone of that high ranking show up at a scene at this time of morning. But nevertheless, she is here. Didn't get any information from her, but she said that she would try to see what she could tell us. Again, still waiting for word from uh, the, the uh, public information office. No, no other details yet on how this happened or uh, who may have done this. But we were told earlier that they were looking for three suspects in connection with the shooting. Reporting live in far northwest Bear County, Katrina Weber, ASAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Katrina. San Antonio police are also looking for a shooter on the south side. Police say a man and woman got into an argument on the northeast side of town by Riddiman and I-35 around 1030 last night. They say the woman left with her brother and drove to the south side. However, police say the suspect followed them and tried to continue the argument at Connor and West Mitchell. That's when police say he pulled out a gun and fired a shot out of the car before driving off. Police say a bullet hit the woman's brother in the shoulder and he is now in the hospital in critical condition. Police responded to another shooting, this one on the south side around one this morning. Uh, it, it happened in the 100 block of Alvarez Place near 35 and Highway 90. Police say a man started an argument with his wife. They say the woman's adult son was there and at one point he pulled out a gun and shot her husband. The man was rushed to the hospital in critical condition. Police say the son remained on scene and is cooperating with the investigation. They have not said if there are any charges. Firefighters say the water was turned off at a southwest side apartment building after a driver crashed through the side of one of the buildings. It happened at 1130 last night in the 1800 block of Thompson Place. That is near Highway 90 and General McMullen. San Antonio police say the driver hit a toilet inside the building and damaged the pipes. They are still investigating what caused that driver to crash into the building. Well, med va mass vaccination sites will reopen registration this morning. 9,000 doses of the Moderna vaccine will be available. That means you must be over the age of 18 to qualify. Phone line will open at 8 o'clock this morning. Write down the number on your screen. It is 1-833-968-1745. Once again, that number, 833-968-1745. You can also find this information on ksat.com. Local health officials are reporting 242 new cases of COVID-19 in Bear County. They're reporting two more people have died from the virus as well. Mayor Ron Nierberg says the seven day rolling average is now at 329 cases per day. He also says hospitalizations are at the lowest point since November. 368 people are currently receiving medical attention because of COVID-19.
South Texas Blood and Tissue Center is still encouraging people who are eligible to donate convalescent plasma to do so. That's despite the new update from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. New recommendations say hospitals should use convalescent plasma with high levels of COVID-19 antibodies because it's more beneficial. However, the South Texas Blood Center says plasma with low levels of antibodies can still be used for other medical treatments. The CDC says now is not the time for states to lift mask requirements. CDC Director Rochelle Walensky says it's up to state leaders to continue to enforce wearing masks for the foreseeable future. She also says everyone should continue to avoid travel outside of the country. Well, ERCOT has made a $16 billion error in pricing during the week of the winter storms. That is according to the Texas Tribune. An independent market monitor wrote a letter to the Public Utility Commission, which oversees ERCOT, that said the market prices for power were too high for nearly two additional days after widespread outages across the state ended. Because ERCOT failed to bring prices back down on time, utility companies had to buy power in the market at inflated prices, which caused some customers to shoulder the costs in Texas. The president and CEO of ERCOT, Bill Magnus, says he will not seek or accept severance pay outlined in his contract. That's according to the Texas Tribune. His contract shows he would have been owed more than $800,000. Magnus was given a 60-day termination notice on Wednesday in the wake of the winter storms and the damage they caused. 609, about 59 degrees. The credit card chip could be old news later on GMSA. We're going to see how two companies are trying to get us to use our fingers as credit cards. San Antonio Humane Society's made some much needed up grades to their facilities this past year. After the break, we'll take a look at new projects and learn why they are so important. And taking a look outside with a live cam, a humid start to your day at 59 degrees, but we are looking forward to a beautiful weekend. We'll be right back. As these adorable puppies and animals await their forever homes, they are all smiles at the San Antonio Humane Society after a much needed expansion is complete. You're able to see the donations in action. We are getting a first look at the San Antonio Humane Society's $10 million expansion project, which includes its new Lou Naylor Medical Building that opened in the middle of the pandemic in October. The medical facility has a much larger operation space where veterinarians can spay and neuter 80 to 100 animals a day, which means more than 20,000 pets a year. The facility also has a separate room for orthopedic surgeries. The much larger medical facility has many more holding stations, examining rooms, and a rehabilitation room that includes a therapy pool. Kim Hinsey, the Director of Development and Public Relations at the San Antonio Humane Society, says the expansion project will help the nonprofit reach so many more animals. I mean, there's anywhere there's like 150,000 pets in San Antonio um, that need services, that are homeless. So we're able to take in some of those pets, we're able to have them spayed and neutered, um, and, you know, help them get out to be adopted. The medical facility isn't just for animals at the Humane Society, but also open to San Antonio pet owners in search of low cost spay and neuter and wellness services. We'll be able to take in more animals. We'll be able to adopt more animals. I mean, it's just it's huge. The capital campaign project also included other renovations on its Fredericksburg Road campus, like renovations to the Puppy Palace and Kitty Cottage. Part of the expansion includes these two new, much bigger dog runs where rescues like Amber and Biscuit have plenty of room to play and run around. Hinsey says it's taken many years to raise the money needed to complete the project, and it's a great feeling to finally see the donations come to fruition. We're very thankful um, to those that have, have helped and those that have answered. Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Some good folks doing great work for our community out there. Yes, great pictures also. And let's go ahead and check in with Daniel. I saw a lot of activity there at I-10 East and Loop 1604 still. Yeah, I was ooing and aahing at the puppies and kittens. and So cute. The kitten cottage. Aw, and the puppy, <laughs> puppy palace and kitten, kitten cottage. cottage yes. <laughs> but uh, you were saying, uh, Stephanie, about the I-10. We still, uh, we had 
have this construction uh, going on, part of the ongoing project, and uh, these, these main lanes were closed earlier. Uh, they're open now, but you can still see traffic is, is, is moving, but it is moving slowly on both uh, the main lanes and over here on the uh, frontage road. Uh, but the, not too bad of a delay, you're only down to 65 miles per hour, this area at uh, 1516, again, between 1604 and I-10. And looking at the uh, east side here, uh, travel time uh, back to normal here, five minutes uh, between 604 and 410. That is a big improvement from earlier this morning and actually uh, from yesterday when we saw that up to 10, maybe 15 minutes. So uh, that's moving along well. Uh, the overall view uh, of the area, some delays here are there, but still relatively uh, quiet for a uh, Thursday morning. And one thing I wanted to tell you about, uh, we have some new traffic signals that are be coming to San Pedro and Jackson Keller and six other intersections in the city of San Antonio. The council approved uh, this contract with TxDOT yesterday. It's part of a federal highway safety program. Hopefully bringing some safety improvements to this intersection and others. We have that story right now at KSAT.com, guys. We look forward to that. Thank you, Samuel. Let's roll that uh, school bus, Mike Osterhage. <laughs> All righty, and you really don't need to warm up the, uh, the bus or the car this morning. Temperatures are, well, think about it. We're about 20 degrees above where we were just a few days ago when we were 10 below normal, got down in the upper 30s, and now we're in the uh, upper 50s, so about 10 above normal. Fall. We have some mist and a nice warm up throughout the day at about 20 to that. So we are going to be anywhere from 10 to 15 degrees above normal. That's here in town. That's 78 degrees, which means out to, to the west and toward the uh, Rio Grande. We're going to be in the low and even some mid 80s up there. Love this picture. The lone red cardinal right there and just how all the branches and the background is kind of on the grayish side. That's so pretty. Make a great frame picture. Thank you very much, Yvonne. Always a, sends in a lot of KSAC Connect pictures. All right, we've been watching this view all morning long just to see what's going on. Actually, the camera's frozen as of right now, or else everybody stopped there on 410. No, the picture's frozen, but um, visibility is not bad at the airport. It's being reported at nine miles, seven burning, then go out toward Kerrville, and the fog does get thicker. A little bit going up I-35 as well, heading in toward New Braunfels, four miles, as well as Castroville. And again, Rock Springs, it was down to zero just a couple of hours ago, now up to nine, but Carrizo Springs has dropped down considerably. Same thing with Catula, a lot of thick fog down to the uh, southwest. So most everybody is seeing a little bit of fog. There's a lot of mist on the roads as well. Very consistent temperatures in the 50s, mid upper 50s, low 60s. Wind is basically non-existent around the area, which is why we have a lot of fog forming up, but notice how the wind has started to shift around around Rock Springs Junction, especially further on out to the northwest, and that drier air is starting to slowly creep its way on in here, and that'll be initially windy conditions, drier air coming in here, then the cooler air is going to hold off until uh, the overnight hours into tomorrow. So with that dry air, that's going to really allow things to, to warm up very, very quickly. We still have a lot of low clouds. You can kind of make out this yeah, a little bit of darker shade of gray moving on through here, still hanging around. So that's going to be the situation. Low clouds as well as uh, fog through at least the rest of the morning commute and then to about, uh, say, 10, between 10, 11 o'clock approximately when that front moves through. It's all being driven by this low up to the north of us, which, yeah, big rain producer. Not for us, a little too far away, but it is the thing that's going to be pulling that front on through here later on this afternoon. So we've got a lot of fog and mist around this morning. Very humid, of course, 72 at noon, partly cloudy skies already at the normal high temperature at noon. And then we top off at 78 degrees and again, some low and even mid 80s off to the west and to the southwest tomorrow morning down to 52 degrees and then we only make it up to 65. It is still going to be kind of on the breezy side tomorrow and 66 on Sunday. Low temperatures are going to be a little closer to normal. High temperatures, of course, over the weekend are below normal, but then it's not going to last very long. Back to the 70s and even 80s by the mid to latter part of next week. So Earlier this week, you were talking about a higher fire danger by today. Were today. you looking at that? Yes, because we've had dry air moving in here and the windy conditions and, mm -hmm. you know, haven't had any rain. So especially out in parts of the hill country. Too. All right. All right. Well, watch out for that. Thanks, Mike. Right now it's 20 past the hour, about 59 degrees. And we want to wish one of our viewers a happy birthday. This is Joe and she's turning 71. Happy birthday, Joe. Happy birthday. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA.
Update your space with Macy's President's Day Furniture and Mattress Specials, like the Radley Shea Sectional for $1,879 and the Monroe Queen Bed, now $279. Plus, get a free adjustable base or box spring with qualifying purchase, now at Macy's. Okay, everyone. Our mission is to provide complete balanced nutrition for strength and energy. Woo! Great tasting and sure. With 9 grams of protein, 27 vitamins and minerals, and nutrients to support immune health. Hi, so you're the scientist here. Does my Aveeno Daily Moisturizer really make my dry skin healthier in one day? It's true, Jen. This prebiotic old formula moisturizes to help prevent dry skin. Impressive. Aveeno. Healthy. It's our nature. Try the body wash, too. I have been suffering with migraine for years. Nurtec ODT has worked wonders for me. Don't take if allergic to Nurtec. The most common side effect was nausea. For more information, go to Nurtec.com. In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive. Many people see you as the ultimate scammer. Are you? She's been called the Soho Grifter. Anna Sorokin, who renamed herself Anna Del V, accused of posing as a German heiress, claiming to have a $60 million bank account overseas, living a high-end life among New York's elite, complete with private flights, boutique hotels, and designer goods. Sorokin was convicted of theft of services, grand larceny, and attempted grand larceny in 2019 and sent to prison. This morning, she is free and speaking out to ABC News. How would you describe the real Anna Delvey. Who is she? Uh, oh, that's such a loaded question. <laughs> the ABC News exclusive interview is coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Mona Kosarabdi, ABC News, New York. In your morning tech news, Samsung and MasterCard joining forces to create a biometric credit card. The company said it will include a built-in fingerprint scanner and several baked-in chips. The idea is to increase security and decrease physical contact points. WhatsApp is adding voice and video calling to its desktop app. The features were only available on the phone app, but the change puts WhatsApp in a better position to compete with Zoom and Google Meet. Plans are also in the works to eventually offer group calls instead of just one-on-one. -on -one. Here's to a perfect road trip. Jeep says Amazon's Fire TV will be built into the newest Wagoneer SUV. The streaming service will be accessible from both the main display and the rear seat displays, but the driver will be prevented from watching Prime Video content while driving. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> it seems like trouble. Time now is 625 and 59 degrees for now. Senators read aloud the entire COVID relief bill. We will see what is next for the future of the proposed stimulus package. And the Spurs, our Spurs fell apart late last night. We're going to take a look back at what went wrong against the Thunder. The day is starting off with a homicide investigation in far northwest Bear County. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. A man was shot dead here in these apartments. I'll have that story. Senators working well into the night debating the massive COVID-19 relief bill. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, a look at that relief package and the latest on the vaccine front. Outside with live cam, warmest morning of the week so far. Foggy, misty, drizzly for some of you. Mike's going to have a forecast for coming up because spring break is about to start for some folks. That's true. Happy Friday. It's March 5th. Good morning, and let's go straight to Mike Ostrange to get an update on what could be a foggy start for some out there. Yeah, we've had a lot of fog in places. Uh, still, the view of downtown is not bad, but you can see it, it is kind of uh, fuzzy looking out there, if you will. And temperatures, we are about 10 degrees above normal right now, have bopped up one degree up to 59, dew points at 57. So when these two numbers are running neck and neck and you don't have much of a breeze, a couple of ingredients is why we are seeing some fog uh, around the metropolitan area. It's not bad. 10 miles visibility, Port of Say, Randolph, Stinson, a little bit of fog on the kind of the corners, Kerrville 
and Castroville, New Braunfels, some, and then Rock Springs. What did have a lot of fog earlier this morning? However, it's all but disappeared. Then go down to the south, uh, Carrizo Springs and Catula, just a half mile visibility in both locations, some there along the coastal plain on top of that. Molds on the moderate side, Mountain Cedar is low. Same thing with Elm. All this is going to be going away by later on this morning. So we have fog mist. Uh, roads were damp when I came into work, so just kind of take it easy because they would be uh, on the slippery side. And then most Mostly sunny skies. We have a front moving through later on this morning. Winds going to be shifting around and that's going to pull in much, much drier air, but not initially cooler air. So we are going to be warming up into the upper 70s, although with the windy and dry conditions, that is going to increase the fire danger, especially out in the hill country. Then cooler air comes in here, so temperatures will only be in the mid 60s this weekend. Next week, then. A lot of clouds hanging around here. No great rain chances, but boy, it's going to be very warm. We're going to be looking at some 80s by next week. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King, and uh, well, looks pretty good in that picture. Anything yeah, big pretty going on? good. Not, not really anything uh, big. We did have the construction earlier out east, Mike, but things are improving. But you see, as you were mentioning, you could see some of the uh, clouds and, and, and some fog in some parts of the area, like uh, this one here, 35 and Laredo. So just uh, take it easy, slow down a little bit in those areas, give plenty of distance and use the low beams this morning. Uh, taking a look here uh, at the big map, uh, not much actually uh, going on this morning. That's a good thing. Some construction, of course, up near New Braunfels on 35. Looking at 37 on the southeast side between uh, 1604 and downtown, 12 minutes each way. So that's a good travel time. And if you're coming in from uh, Pleasanton, 28 minutes from that area, 29 minutes on 37 and 181 from Floresville, uh, 24 minutes on I-10 coming into downtown San Antonio from Bernie and 19 minutes on uh, 90 coming in from uh, Castroville, 26 minutes from New Braunfels. We'll have another update coming up. Thank you, Samuel. Gunshots fired in the middle of the night have Bear County Sheriff's detectives investigating a homicide this morning. They spent the last few hours searching for clues at an apartment complex near Interstate 10 and Fair Oaks Parkway. Our Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Now, Katrina, you said earlier that detectives were asking some residents for surveillance video. Do you know whether anything was caught on camera? Well, I did speak to one man who lives here and he says that the detectives had asked for his surveillance video. He himself had not had a chance to look at it yet, though, and he said he had just woken up to the knock on the door from those detectives. He didn't even hear the gunshots overnight, so we don't know exactly what they found. We also don't know exactly what happened here because uh, we're not getting a whole lot of information here at the scene. Now, a deputy did tell us earlier that it was a 20-year-old man who had been shot in the face, shot dead, inside an apartment on the third floor of this building. You can see the patrol cars are still here right now. Uh, the homicide detectives who were walking around before have left the scene, but they still have this guarded. We also have one of the top brass here from the sheriff's office, a deputy chief who uh, I spoke with earlier, uh, earlier but uh, she did not offer a whole lot of information either. And I pointed out that that is kind of unusual for someone of that rank to be here at this time of day. But uh, we don't know whether that has any significance uh, on this situation. Again, not a lot of information coming forth. They told us that we'd have to get with the public information officer who doesn't come on until later today. But all we know is that this is a fatal shooting involving a man uh, of tw uh, 20 years old or about that age. Reporting live in far northwest Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. San Antonio police say a woman died in a car crash on the north side this morning. Police said it happened around 2 a.m. on the 1604 Access Road near Bitters. Police say a woman jumped a barrier in her car and spun into a pole. She was pronounced dead at the scene. Traffic investigators still looking into what caused her to crash. A special committee will meet this morning to investigate the response to last month's winter weather crisis, and you can take part in it. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says it will start at 10 this morning at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center. The mayor created the panel to examine what happened with CPS Energy and SAWS. The meeting will be broadcast on TVSA. You can also dial in for audio by calling the number on your screen. That is 210 210-207. 5555. Five, five. The mayor says if you decide to attend in person, health and safety protocols for COVID-19 will be in effect. We will also have more information from this meeting on KSET.com and in our later newscasts. 
The U.S. Senate worked well into the early hours of this morning, reading each and every word of that massive COVID relief bill on the Senate floor. Meanwhile, the country is ramping up its vaccination efforts as states battle with restrictions and mask mandates. ABC's Aika Jachi has the latest. Good morning. It's split down party lines. Democrats want to move forward with the bill that contains a lot of their initiatives, while Republicans are stalling, calling the relief package a spending spree. 628 pages. The table of contents for this act is as follows. It's the length of President Biden's nearly $2 trillion COVID relief bill, and Republicans want to hear every single word that's written. A stalling tactic from Republicans who say the bill is too expensive. The real tragedy here is not Senate process. It's how ill-suited this bill is to what Americans need right now. But according to a recent Monmouth University poll, 62% of Americans are in favor of the $1.9 trillion relief package, compared to 34% of Americans who oppose it. The bill includes unemployment benefits of $400 a week. It also includes $160 billion for COVID testing and vaccinations, help for small businesses, and stimulus payouts of $1,400 for Americans earning up to $75,000 a year. This morning, an average of 2 million vaccines are going into arms every Every day in this country, from coast to coast, mass vaccination sites are popping up. Nine new FEMA vaccination sites opened this week. Now, Dr. Fauci says studies are being conducted on vaccinated people to find out which activities are safe and which restrictions could be lifted in the near future. In Washington, Ike Ajachi, ABC News. Texas schools will not lose state funding this academic year for attendance declines due to the coronavirus. However, Governor Greg Abbott says school districts will need to maintain or increase the rate of students learning in person. That's according to the Texas Tribune. The report stated that districts will be funded based on the number of students who attended before the pandemic. However, the Texas State Teachers Association says the governor's caveat could be dangerous because another surge of COVID-19 cases could force students to go back to virtual learning. A third woman is accusing New York Governor Andrew Cuomo of sexual misconduct. In an interview with CBS Evening News yesterday, Charlotte Bennett said she believes the governor was trying to sleep with her and was uncomfortable with questions he asked her. It all comes as the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times continue to report that the true number of people who died in New York State nursing homes was altered by Governor Cuomo's top aides this past July. The Capitol Police want National Guard troops to stay in Washington, D.C. a little longer. They requested a two-month extension, which is now under review at the Department of Defense. It comes as the Department of Homeland Security and the FBI are warning of threats posed by domestic extremists. Nearly 5,000 National Guard troops have been in D.C. since President Joe Biden's inauguration. They are scheduled to stay on through March 12th. U.S. Department of Justice encouraging the Supreme Court to dismiss three pending cases concerning so-called sanctuary cities. Sanctuary cities limit cooperation between local law enforcement and federal immigration authorities. Lower courts were divided over a policy from the Trump administration which directed the Justice Department to withhold federal grant funds from cities that limited cooperation. Elite Iraqi security forces are on the streets of Baghdad today because Pope Francis just landed in the country. The plane touched down about an hour ago. The Iraqi government set up counterterrorism forces and put a curfew in place while the pontiff is visiting. It is the first time a pope has ever visited Iraq. Pope Francis is planning to meet with Muslim leader Ayatollah Ali al-Sistani. He is expected to urge the country's dwindling number of Christians to stay and help rebuild the country after years of war and persecution. 639, about 60 degrees. The pandemic has had a big impact on college enrollment. After the break, we're going to see how community colleges are being hit the hardest. Community colleges have been hit the hardest amid all colleges and four-year universities experience only slight declines, beating many predictions that the outcome would be worse. Nationwide enrollment at community colleges, which offer two-year degrees and vocational training and often attract older students looking to learn new skills, dropped by 10% from fall of 2019 to the fall of 2020. According to the National Student Clearing House, the Associated Press reports, while it was no surprise that fewer freshmen enrolled at four year in community colleges delaying studies until campuses fully reopened, the pandemic took a much heavier toll on older adult students who frequently choose a community college route, according to the AP. 
Many lost jobs and have no time for their own schooling as they supervise their children's online classes. Martha Parham, the senior vice president for the American Association of Community Colleges, says, quote, the majority of them are working, many of them in industries that have been decimated by the pandemic, and they're trying to navigate that and take classes in a very daunting, challenging time, end quote. More Americans typically turn to community college education amid economic downturn, seeking to learn new job skills or change careers. But the depth of the pandemic's downturn, which kept many people homebound, seems to have upended the usual trends, according to education experts. Advocates hope the enrollment downturn is temporary, and some predict many students will return to classes when campuses reopen and jobs return. Guys, back to you. It was a tale of two halves for our Spurs last night. They took on the Oklahoma City Thunder at the AT&T Center in the last game before this weekend's NBA All-Star break. Spurs came out firing in the first half. Silver and Black scored 37 points just in the second quarter to build a 14-point lead in the game. But if you want a happy ending, you're going to have to press mute on your remote right now. Spurs imploded in the second half. 19 turnovers allowed the Thunder to march right back and take the lead. Spurs blow the 14-point lead and lose 107. 102. The All-Star game is this Sunday. No Spurs players are there. So the entire team will have several days off. Let's go look at the current look at the current standings in the midpoint of the season. Spurs currently sitting seventh in the Western Conference. Next time Spurs play won't be till March 10th. They'll take on their I-35 rivals, the Dallas Mavericks. Okay, we need a little break. Yeah. Time for a little rest. Yeah, go Spurs go for next time. For now, let's go ahead and check in with Samuel. I know there was a lot of construction earlier. How are things looking now? Well, uh, well, things are looking uh, fine, and we'll get to that in just a moment, Stephanie. But, you know, we were talking about spring break. A lot of people maybe take a road trip. Uh, gas is more expensive, actually more time, uh, uh, more expensive than it has been in the past year. Some of those pandemic influence low prices are, are gone. We were just uh, saying a couple months ago it was its longest sustained period below $2 per gallon, but now up to 239 in Bear County up to 248 across the state of Texas, still uh, cheaper than the rest of the country at 275. Uh, taking a look at a uh, trans guide here. This is I-10 at 1604. We were talking about the construction earlier. Uh, with the light, you can see that uh, things have are moving a little better now. And of course, no big incidents on the map right now. Looking at the medical center area, Fredericksburg Road, your normal time, 14 minutes from Woodlawn to Hebner, but a few delays there, though, on from if you're going southbound, uh, 17 minutes there, guys. Thank you, Samuel. Yes, thanks for the update. I like that picture, or at least the caption, peaceful right. yep. and beautiful. Yeah, yes. it, it, that just sums it up perfectly. It is so gorgeous out there, and that's what this evening is going to be like, just peaceful, beautiful. We, we've got a lot of humidity this morning. Um, I know a lot of folks aren't really big fans of that, and as you can see, it is just kind of, kind of murky looking out there. There's also a lot of mist. Now, as far as visibility, it's really dropped down now. Kerrville down to a quarter mile. Castroville has dropped down. New Braunfels has as well. Right in the metropolitan area, it's not bad. And Bernie, Bernie stage now has no no uh, fog being reported out there. Same thing over in Rock Springs, but then go down to Carrizo Springs, Catula, a lot of fog and down along the coastal plain. So it is going to be continuing to get thicker in places at times and then thin out a little bit at times. A lot of low clouds. Notice this uh, kind of darker shade of gray right there, just kind of hanging on top of us. That's going to be sticking around for the next couple of hours. Off to the north of us, as you can see, there's a pretty good, uh, pretty good system right there, producing a lot of rain, but it just didn't get close enough to do us any good, except this is what is going to be pulling the front on through here later on this morning. It's going to be about... Um, Oh, between 9 and 11 o'clock, obviously sooner in parts of the hill country. It's already starting to move through, uh, say, Ozona, Dryden, much drier, has started to move in here. And then it's going to work its way across the uh, hill country and in through town here about 1030 or so this morning. The wind will shift around out of the northwest. We are getting much drier air. Cooler air is going to hold off for about um, 12, 18 hours or so. So with that drier air and windy conditions, that's going to increase the fire danger out in portions of the uh, hill country. So here's the low. And it really helped to warm things up, pumping the humidity. Now on the back side of it, it pulls down that front. So we will have temperatures well, about 10 degrees above normal today and then about five or so below normal down in the mid 60s tomorrow as well as over the weekend. Now going into the first part of next week, 
Another big trough is developing out there to the west. We get this very pronounced southwesterly flow, so that will then progressively continue to warm things up. We'll be back up into the mid and upper 70s by the middle of the week, and then it looks like low 80s going in toward the end of next week. And that low is really going to continue again with that southwesterly flow around here and that trough. There are some indications, though, that this system will develop and bring us a chance of rain. Long range forecast chance of rain by next weekend. So we're going to have to wait. So what is that? The 13th, 14th, right around there or something like that. 72 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperature today gets all the way up to 78 degrees, low and mid 80s down over toward the Rio Grande. Tomorrow it's also, like I said, going to be very windy today. Tomorrow we start off 52 degrees, get up to only 65. So cool ish. A mm, few clouds hanging around here, 66 on Sunday. And then, like I said, back to the uh, mid 70s and even low 80s by the end of the week. Very nice. Yeah, good looking weekend. Nice, uh, except for the fact no rain. Well, that's true. Well, hopefully coming soon, maybe right. the following weekend. Yeah, thank you, Mike. About 10 till 60 degrees. And coming up during the pandemic, more people have adopted dogs and more people have bought homes. That means there may come a time when you need to move with your new pet. Tomorrow on GMSA, we will look at the best ways to introduce your pooch to a new home. Outside with live cams, yeah, things are looking out there right now. Yeah, kind of a foggy, misty start to our Friday, but it is almost the weekend. We celebrate that fact. We'll take another look at uh, traffic with Samuel King coming up. Good morning, coming up here on ABC News, an exclusive with the woman accused of being a fake heiress, convicted of bilking banks and businesses out of tens of thousands of dollars. She is now out of prison, and she's going to tell her side of the story right here, only on GMA. People at this northwest side apartment complex are waking up to news of a shooting death. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. It happened here at the Rustico at Fair Oaks Apartments, right in this building here on the third floor. That's where deputies have been working since about 2 o'clock this morning. Now, they did tell us early on that it was a man about 20 years old who was shot in the face, shot dead inside an apartment, and they said they were looking for uh, possibly three suspects in connection with the shooting. Now, we have seen investigators going around doors to door. One man told us that they asked him for his surveillance video to see if it shows anything related to this apparent homicide. We're not getting a lot more information from anyone here at the scene. We were told that we have to talk to the public information officer who comes on a little bit later today. But what we know again is that a man about 20 years old was shot and killed here early this morning. This is near I-10 and Fair Oaks Parkway. Reporting from far northwest Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Coming up today on GMSA at 9 is energy companies braced for last month's winter blast. Many of them had in-house meteorologists describing how bad it would get. But a Defender's investigation found that CPS Energy used a college student instead. Dylan Collier joins us to debrief his findings today at 9 after Good Morning America. Let's get the findings on your morning commute. Five till, here's Samuel King. All right, guys, this is a 35 at uh, Laredo, the camera view there. You can kind of see the, the clouds that Mike was talking about. It's kind of a gloomy start to your commute, uh, but traffic is uh, flowing well. Looking inside uh, Loop 410 on 35 this morning, 10 minutes coming from the northeast side to downtown, and then another uh, 10 minutes as well uh, from the southwest side, so not seeing many of those delays at this point. Uh, 17 minutes coming in on 35 from Lytle, 26 minutes coming in on 35 from New Braunfels into downtown, 29 minutes from Seguin, Mike. Yeah, we got a lot of, uh, well, we're not going to see much sunshine until probably about noon or so. We got a lot of fog. Kerrville is uh, down to a quarter mile visibility. Same thing, uh, Carrizo Springs, Catula. And we're just going to have to watch it around town for some of this fog to maybe form up. Temperatures mid upper 50s and uh, some low 60s. 72 at noon, 78 for a high temperature. Northwesterly wind, 15, 20 miles per hour. It's going to be very breezy today. Drier air is going to move on in here. And this is going to take place about uh, late morning. Fire danger is going to be higher out in portions of the hill country with the windy and dry conditions. Still very warm today up to 78, but lower temperatures over the weekend. Nice looking weekend and for spring break, it's going to get hot by the end of next week. Well, happy spring break, everybody. We hope you enjoy your backyard. Yeah. <laughs> yes, a lot of us will. Thank you for joining us and have a great day. We'll see you back here at night.